Hello YouTube, welcome back to Run Level Zero. I'm in at zero, and today I'd like to take a look at one of my favorite Linux applications, Multisystem. Now Multisystem will allow you to turn almost any mass storage device into a live multi-boot environment. Now this will allow you to carry a multitude of live operating systems and utilities on a single thumb or hard drive that you can then use for system or data recovery. Also, if you're like me and enjoy experimenting with all the latest OS's and distros, Multisystem will allow you to try those out without committing to a permanent change on your computer. I have here the uh, Multisystem website and I'll link this below in the description. Take a few minutes to peruse it once you get there. Uh, they have a listing on their main page here of some of the OS's that it'll boot. This isn't all of them. And if you uh, if you like what they have to offer, you may want to consider uh, giving these guys a contribution. The version that we're going to use today is free, um, but people put a lot of hard work into developing something like this, so if you feel inclined, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. On the installation page, now this page does come in French, uh, if your browser supports it, you can translate it. You see I can translate it mine into English. But on the installation page, we're going to be using method 1. Now, please note, multi-system is designed for use on Ubuntu or Debian-based distros, Linux distros. I have not tried it on any RPM-based systems, but we may, tech, we may uh, check that out sometime in the future and there is a note here check that Xterm is installed on your distribution before we're running the install script uh, most Debian or Ubuntu based distros uh, do have multi-system or do have Xterm already installed but if you don't have it it's very simple just open up a terminal type sudo apt get install Xterm and hit enter. I'm not going to do that here because I already have it uh, installed, but most repos already have Xterm in them and uh, you should be able to install it with no problems. Now what we're going to do is we're going to download the script. We're just going to click this hyperlink and we're going to save the file. Alright, once that's done we're going to open up our file browser. We're going to go to our downloads directory and you can see our tarball here where we've downloaded the script. Simply right click if you're using an Ubuntu based system and click extract here. You can also do this from the command line. And here we have the install shell script. Now we're going to open up a terminal we're going to CD to downloads. If you LS, you'll see install system, install depot multi-system shell script is here. It's if it's in green, that means that uh, it has already been marked as executable. If not, you're just going to right-click your script, go to properties, go to permissions and make sure it's checked off allow this file to run as program now you can also do this from the command line with chmod plus x but uh, the GUI is just a little easier friendlier way of doing it so from here from back in the terminal we're just going to type period forward slash install depot multisystem dot sh and click enter you're going to be prompt that multi installing multi-system requires administrator rights. You're going to click OK, then Xterm will pop up and prompt you for your uh, administrator password, at which point the system will install. I'm not going to do it because I already have it installed on my system. Once installation is complete, in your menu, you'll find multi-system under the accessories category. Now I have added it already to my favorites. Now you're going to plug in a FAT32 formatted hard drive or thumb drive. 
multi-system splash will come up and here we go with the main GUI. You'll see your devices located here at the bottom. You'll also have the ability to update from this main screen, uninstall, you can select your default language, multitude of languages are supported, and you can change your your color scheme. I like green. So what you're going to do is you're going to select your device and you're going to click confirm. Now if this is the first time you've run multi-system on this device, you'll be prompted to confirm the installation of Grub2 to the boot sector of that device. Go ahead and allow that to happen. When multi-system opens up in the GUI, as you see we have here, you'll be given a multitude of tabs, four, uh, five tabs up here, um, but the main, your, the bulk of your work is going to be done on this main tab. I have no idea what this eyeball means. I just go ahead and click it. This will free up your menus here. Um, here in the in the middle, you can see the systems that I've already have installed. To add a distro, all you're going to do is you're going to collect, you're going to select this uh, CD icon. You're going to go to the location where you have your ISOs stored, select the ISO you want, click OK. It'll prompt you for your password and then it'll install the, the uh, ISO to your thumb drive for you. I'm not going through that because on this particular one I don't have enough memory left. So I picked the wrong thumb drive, but uh, it's okay for demonstration purposes. I've done some customizations here I want to show you. Also from here, you can move uh, your distros up and down on the list using these. You can you can uh, remove a selected distribution from your uh, from your uh, thumb drive from your multi boot system here. You can edit, add boot options. You can update Grub2. You can update the multi system itself. If you're not sure whether a distro or utility is uh, supported or not. You can go to this page where it says download live CDs and this is a listing of all the uh, live CDs that are supported by multi-system at this time. It supports searching, okay, it's tabbed out and categorized by utilities, antivirus systems, game systems. And if you double click on any one of these, it'll launch your web browser, which mine isn't, uh, there we go, Firefox. It'll launch your web browser and uh, take you to the download page of your selected distro. So let's go back home. Also you have QEMU, which is the quick emulator, and VirtualBox that you can use to test your uh, thumb drive. So when we click that, I like using QMU, it seems to work a little bit better for me. You'll be prompted for your sudo password and QMU will launch and here you go, this is your thumb drive with all of your distros already laid out for you. Now it's going to boot by default into Grub2 and the majority of your distros will boot with Grub2 but for those that won't, such as Hiram's Boot CD, if you use that, or ERD Commander, those will be on a Grub for DOS submenu. A couple others, such as Wi-Fi Slacks, would be under a Sys Linux menu. Now I have to tell you, this is not the default paper. This is not the default wallpaper or color scheme. I've done some uh, customizations here, and if you want to customize yours, it's very easy. All you do is open up your file manager select your multi-boot device you're going to go into the boot folder within the boot folder the splash is where your wallpaper is uh, stored and if you want to change your wallpaper just use any JPEG or PNG image that is 640 by 480 in dimension and name it as splash.png Make sure you drop it in that splash folder. And within the grub folder, you're going to have your main menu, which is going to be grub.cfg. And you can edit those in your favorite text, uh, text editor.
This happens to be leaf pad. And from in here, uh, you can uh, select your uh, your boot image, and you can also select and change your um, your uh, color scheme. Mine is magenta and black. Whenever you're doing a color scheme, if you select black as a secondary color, it'll give you a transparent background without a, a vertical line. So mine for regular text is magenta, and for highlighted text is green, and you won't see the highlight line. Below these, you'll start seeing the entries for each one of your uh, live distributions that you've added. Now, you can edit the menu entries, but it is not recommended that you edit anything below it. Sometimes when you add a system, if multi-system doesn't recognize the specific distro, you'll get the file name in here for your ISO. It'll say generic xyz.iso file. You can change that name in here for your menu entry to make it look better. So we'll close out all of all of that. Well, this has been uh, multi-system. Let's take a peek at it right here. Take a look at Trinity Rescue Kit. It'll boot to Trinity Rescue Kit within QMU, and in a moment you'll start seeing that come up. So this gives you the opportunity to uh, recover data, uh, recover an operating system, disinfect that pesky Windows partition that's been infected by a virus and won't even boot. You can boot to it safely in a live system, affect your repairs, rescue your data, and be Superman on the block for a day. Um, well, that's about it, boys and girls. This is, like I said, this is one of my favorite distribution. This is one of my favorite uh, utilities. It is definitely worth a look, definitely worth putting in your bag of tricks. And uh, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you for watching.